This is Tackle Talk Live, an inside scoop on how, when, and where to catch bass with a primary focus on Toledo Bend and Sam Rayburn. Interviews with anglers who are consistent winners on the tournament trail. Your hosts, Camus Boats Pro Staffer Steve Graff and Gill Fishing Accounts Manager Kevin Jean. Two anglers who understand bass fishing with tournament success on all levels. Anglers willing to share their knowledge to help you become a better fisherman. So sit up and pay close attention as they give detailed tournament information and results. Here are the hosts of Tackle Talk Live, Steve Graff and Kevin Jean. Welcome to Tackle Talk Live. I'm our pro staffer, Steve Graff, along with Gill Fishing Accounts Manager, Kevin Jean. Today, we're going to wrap up Brandon Belt on Cedar Creek. We got the BFL wrap up on Sam Rayburn. We got Outlaw Outdoors 316, Ray Scott National Championship, and we've got the final results of the Bass Champs Mega Bass on Lake Fort. And Kevin, tell them who our special guest is today. Mr. J MLF Pro, uh, he's fishes the invitation. It was Jaden Parrish, uh, won the bfl last weekend on sam raven with over 27 pounds uh ran away with that event and we really wanted to have somebody coming on from rayburn because we've got the sealy big bass splash coming up steve not this weekend but next weekend over there so we know a lot of guys are starting to prepare for that tournament so we want to bring Jaden on and uh and talk about that event and kind of give us a fish report on on sam raven and what's going on yeah, yep, and uh, I, I had the good the, the legend himself, Bob Seeley, on my other show this uh, while ago, and great gave a great interview. And uh, Bob's excited. I mean, they they've got they're expecting. I mean, they average Kevin, as you well know, probably depending on two to three thousand, twenty five hundred yeah. or three thousand. He said they could hit five thousand boats for this event. The money they're giving away. It's the fortieth anniversary for the Seeley Big Bass Splash. It's at Rayburn. And uh, the Corps of Engineers is actually working with him. They, I think they've shut the gates. <laughs> so Steve, the how, much come pool, how much pool uh, do you have when, when the Corps of Engineers will shut down for you? Hey, uh, dude, <laughs> think, but think about the money that guy has brought into yes. that community over there. I, yes. I mean, it, it's staggering. They ought to name the lake after him when it's all said and done. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, uh, good gosh, it's just incredible uh, what Bob has accomplished with that Big Bass series. And uh, But anyway, uh, so so we're going to cover that. Uh, we've also got, and, and we've got late-level reports as well from Toledo Bend and Sam Rayburn. Of course, with all the rain we've had, especially north of Toledo Bend and Rayburn, the lakes are jumping up. And uh, I know Toledo's on a, on a, a hard rise, and so is Rayburn. And we'll talk about all that and more uh, today. But first, we're going to take a real quick break. And when we return, we will visit with Jaden Parrish and see exactly how he won the BFL over there on Sam Rayburn last weekend. All right. When we return, we'll have Jaden Parrish. We'll be right back. A good marine dealer is hard to find, but a great dealer is even harder. But in Iowa, Louisiana, there's a marine dealer that falls into the great category, Power Implements Marine, South Louisiana's go-to dealer for all things related to the boating industry. A Minn Kota, Garmin, and Mercury dealer, guaranteeing you first-rate service in both sales and repair. A great selection of new and used boats to choose from, including Skeeter, G3, Ranger, Camus, and Go Devil, a knowledgeable staff that will treat you like family and are always willing to go the extra mile to ensure you walk out a happy customer to see everything they have to offer go to powerimplements.com or stop by 606 east miller street in iowa louisiana plus mention tackle talk live and save 500 dollars off a new or pre-owned boat or 50 dollars off your first service ticket Toledo Health is a full-service primary and acute care clinic. Nurse practitioners Jarrett Rule and Melissa Vines bring quality health care that's needed and convenient to the area. Nothing is worse than being sick on your family or fishing getaway. Whether it's a stomach virus or a hook in the hand, Toledo Health Care will try and meet all your health care needs. Appointments available and walk-ins are always welcome. So the next time you're feeling down at Toledo Bend, stop by Toledo Health Care, located on Highway Six, just south of Toledo Town or call 318-508-5323. 
Very few stores are a complete one-stop shop, but Cypress Knee Outdoors is such a place. A store within a store, Cypress Knee is located inside 3J's 4-Way. Whether you need gas, food, drinks, or bait and tackle, they have it. Cypress Knee Outdoors carries top-name fishing brands like Strike King, Santone, Spro, and v &M. Crappie jigs from Bobby Garland. Need hunting gear? They have it. Ammunition from rifle to shotgun shells. Deer scents from Buck Wild and Doe and Heat. Deer stands from Titan and feeders from T-Hanger. Cypress Knee has it all. Located off I-49, exit 127, just south of Natchitoches, Louisiana. So stop by Cypress Knee Outdoors and let John Abram and his staff show you everything they have to offer. Or give them a call at 318-238-HUNT. Watching Tackle Talk Live, a show dedicated to making you a better angler. Now back to the guys with all the inside scoop, Kevin Jean and Steve Graff. This is Tackle Talk Live. Thank you for tuning us in. This segment presented by Toledo Health, 3J's four-way home of Cypress and the Outdoors, and Power Implements Marine, located right there in Iowa, Louisiana. And if you mention Tackle Talk Live, You'll get a $500 discount off the purchase of a newer used boat, or you can get a $50 discount off your first service ticket. So uh, make sure you mention Tackle Talk Live. On the Tackle Talk Hotline, we've got Jaden Parrish, winner of last weekend's uh, BFL tournament on Sam Rayburn. And hey, Jaden, welcome to the program. We appreciate you coming on with us. And I guess, Jaden, let's, I, I know this week compared to last week, the lake's going to fish totally different because of all the rain and water we had come in. But did the lake level last week affect what well, obviously didn't affect what you were doing, but the overall, did it have a big effect? Cause the weights were way down on Rayburn. I, I think a lot of the thing that had to do with it was, um, you know, the, the wind for one. And, uh, cause I mean, it was blowing, you know, 30 so miles an hour. Yeah. And, uh, also, Maybe some of the weights were down because a lot of people a lot of people were fishing the belt, and uh, also we had a fog delay until roughly nine o'clock. So I think those oh. three things really contributed to the weight. I so heard, you missed that early. I heard y'all had a fog, a fog delay for a, for a while, and and he didn't push back your time. You still have regular check-in time, correct? Right. It, it was nine, to, yeah. which my check-in was three o'clock and nine to three, really. Right. Wow. So you had to get her done. Yeah. <laughs> I had to get on it pretty quick. So, so Jaden, and look, you've been fishing Rayburn, and we were just talking off air. You know, you've been fishing Rayburn a lot the past couple of months, or about last month, with the, with uh, you know, the Toyota series, the Belt, and several other things you've been going on. Uh, you're you are fishing MF, MLF Invitationals this year, which you did fish that tournament on Sam Rayburn as well. Uh, but you've had a lot of tournaments on Rayburn, BFL. Man, things just kind of seem to. To happen for you. I mean, 27 and 27 pounds, uh, just over 21 pounds of second place. It, it looks, it looks like the fish really lined up for you here. Kind of take us through the day and, and how it went down and also kind of changes that you've seen from fish over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, man. I mean, we can, uh, if y'all don't mind, we can kind of start it off in January and kind of go through it. Absolutely. Or if y'all just want to talk about this weekend, no, I mean, whichever one y'all want to do. Okay. So in January, you know, the lake was low. It was about like it is now. It was, you know, six, seven foot low, and we had a BFL. And uh, I caught them kind of out uh, closer to the river channel, those suspended mm -hmm. fish on my forward facing sonar. And uh, I ended up placing seventh in the BFL. And then there was a month off until we got to the invitational on Rayburn because we had off limit. And when we got to the invitational, you know, I didn't, I wasn't on the lake for 30 days, got there in the yeah. lake's normal pool. So that really threw me for a loop, and uh, we had three days to practice, and uh, I, found, I ended up finding my fish, you know, a lot shallower in, like, that 8 to 12-foot range. And then fast forward to now, in the uh, in this BFL, I was catching them back out on the main lake. And I guess that also has something to do with their spawning stages. Yeah, yeah. 
So you think the majority of the spawn is pretty much done their they've pretty much done their thing now, haven't they? I believe so. I mean, both of the the giants that I caught this past weekend were both post spawn, but I'm sure there's you know some some that haven't spawned yet due to them pulling the water because I think that has a big yeah. effect on the fish just not wanting to spawn. Yeah, yeah. So you say offshore? What 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 water depth are we talking about? Um, this past weekend, I caught one of my giants in ten foot on a brush pile, and one of them in thirty. And then I had some cranking wow. fish that I started on that was in fifteen foot. So it was so, kind of so. Take us through the day, Jaden, and y'all. And I know y'all didn't. Y'all took off at nine o'clock. You say you had some cranking fish first thing that morning. I'm assuming um you know fog delay so kind of take us through the day and when it all went down and when you caught your big fish and how big the big fish were okay so uh we took off at nine o'clock and i <laughs> i had three schools of fish that i had found you know a day or two before the tournament that i really thought i could catch you know 20 to 25 pounds in first thing and uh, wow. i pull up on my first cranking spot and uh there's you know there's some boats around there because there was a, a high school championship going on and um, I pulled pulled up to my first spot, and I the first I don't know six or seven casts I had like sixteen pounds, and I kind of got out of there before they really noticed anything. And um, and then I went to my second school, and I culled I think once to maybe seventeen, and then I culled again in my third school to maybe seventeen and a half. And after that, I just started running new and old brush piles that I had marked in all, all different kind of water columns. I just was kind of like in that uh, mid lake section from Caney to the bridge. And I would just run waypoints that I had marked from years past or new. And um, I would just pull up and drop my trolling motor and kind of look at, look on forward facing sonar. And the majority of the brush piles, you know, didn't have nothing on them, no fish or no bait or nothing. And um, so I ran, ran brush piles and about 11 o'clock, I pulled up in a drain that had one in it. And I, um, uh, I seen some crappie on one brush pile and, um, uh, and so I <clears> kind of <throat> skipped over that brush pile and went on up the drain a little bit. There was another one and I got to that other brush pile and, um, I just seen one, you, you know, just floating ab above it and ended up catching her and she was nine, four. Ooh. And then, uh, I, so I had that nine, four and she hung me up in the brush pile for like five minutes and finally come out ah. and got her in the boat. Jerk but, bait, um, a rig, how we catch her? Um, no, it was on a uh, ball head, like a quarter ounce okay. ball head yeah, yeah. on a six cent whale, the 3.0 version, mm -hmm. like the little one, mm -hmm. and uh, pearl white. So mm -hmm. um, she ate that and hung me up in the brush pile on an eight pound line. I thought I'd never get out of the brush pile, but she came <laughs> out and I got her in the net. And uh, so I kept running some more brush piles. And about two o'clock, I was kind of making my way south and um pulled up on a brush pile on a main lake point and and the brush pile is actually in about 30 foot and um seen another big one sitting on top of it and um tried to throw that uh little bait at her and she would just kind of follow it so i pulled it away from her real quick and i got uh, the the bait that's really won all my money this year which is the six inch version of the whale mm -hmm. and um uh, and i i put it on a uh, on a three eighths ounce belly weight like a uh, kind of like a flashy swimmer but without the uh blade without and, the blade um, yeah got it down there on her and she ate it and i had got her in the boat and she was a 713. now Jaden, how was the navigation over there i know it was six and a half feet low when y'all were there does it really affect mid lake very much as much as it does say the the canyons and the northern end above the bridge the the only place that i think it kind of gets a little hairy is Right there around the Peckerwood area, there's a yeah. point of stump that kind of faces towards the bank and another one that comes off of the bank. And uh, and the water's only two or three foot. So, I mean, if they drop it much more, it's going to be real hairy. Yeah, yeah. And you kind of got to run through the two points of uh, timber where there's a clean spot. And um, if they drop it anymore, you're going to have to run around the other side by Harvey. Right, right. Jaden, you talking about them cranking spots. So are, are we are we going? I mean, them fish and, and this happens on Toledo Bend a lot when they they run up there and they do that thing and spawn and they run right back out there to the deep water. Some some years we skip and and, and for to me 
it's been the years when we've had water up and down, and especially really low. Um, those fish run up there and spawn, and they run back out to some of their deep holes. Now, there's a lot of fish still up shallow, don't get me wrong, but those schools, are you finding big schools out deep that you're cranking? Uh, yeah, and um, so like during the Toyota series on Rayburn, there wasn't many fish offshore. Right. Like, right. I ended up placing 12th in that tournament, but I was not seeing many fish offshore, which I think like that little period where the Toyota was, because in the Invitational, there was a lot. And in the yeah. Toyota, there wasn't many. And uh, now, they're, they're coming back out. So my cranking spots were these three secondary points, you know, in a creek. Secondary, and okay, one out I got you. Creek, but three different creeks. And I was, uh, and, you know, find them on side scan. And there would be, you know, 50 <laughs> to 100 fish per school moving out. Dang. Because Jane, during practice, Jane, like four, four days, say, say it again. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. Now, so, like, four days before this BFL, the, the, the school that I thought I would catch the majority of my weight on was actually, like, two secondary points further back in the creek than where I caught them. So, that, uh, they're on their, way, on their way out for sure. Well, that kind of leads me to my, the question I've got. Is, is it too early for the summer pattern, or are they, are they starting to get in that summer pattern? And, well, this weekend, of course, all the water. Now, one thing I've heard about Sam Rayburn, unless it's a real hard rise, fish don't go to the bank like they do at Toledo Bend. Uh, slow rise, they will pull up with it, but a hard rise, they have a tendency to stay where they're at. Uh, your experience with that? Uh, well, I, I do think, in my experience, I feel like, you can see a lot more fish on the bank, and it's easier to sight fish over there at Toledo Bend. But um, yeah, man, I think I think the fish on Rayburn do it really, really fast. Like they they yeah. push up and push out really fast. And that's yeah. what I was saying yeah. about the Toyota. You know, like there was three days where during that tournament where I wasn't seeing a whole lot of fish offshore. And you know, fast forward to the belt that was literally four or five days later, they're back out there. Yeah. 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 So a summer pattern, uh, are they getting to that point right now was my other question. I, yeah, I think it's on the, the summer patterns way out on, you know, the, the deeper brush piles and the main lake points and yeah, stuff yeah. like that that we all catch them on in the summer. They're starting to get there right now. And it's only going to okay. get better throughout the week. And, um, and you know, and, and you know the splash is coming up, what, next weekend? Yeah, it's not this weekend, by that next time weekend. That, so, right. so that's what yeah, I want. I think, uh, I, I, that's what I wanted to ask you about, Jane. So, you got thousands of people coming to Sam Rayburn within the next, starting to come next week, even this weekend, even to practice, um, coming to fish that Sealy event. Give, give us, <laughs> give us a little bit of fishing report here of what you saw in practice. You've already kind of told us there's some, there's some secondary points starting to load up. Few fish and brush piles, but as I heard you say, not many. Um, and they seem to be on top of the brush piles, which they're not out there out deep. It's not like go throw a football jig in a brush pile. It's not May. It's not June yet. But kind of break down Sam Raven for us. A little fishing report for the guys coming to fish to see Lee, not this weekend, but next weekend. Man, if I was, if, if I was, fit, which I can't fish the sea Lee anyways, right. even if I was home, um, if I was a guy that was going to fish the sea Lee tournament, I would definitely try to be ahead of the fish and out on the mm -hmm. main lake. You know, I, I feel like they're coming and they're moving fast. And those are those deeper, you know, 18 to 25 foot brush piles will really start to heat up by the big bass splash. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, good deal. Kevin, you got anything else? What's your next, uh, what next invitation you got? What you leave for Kentucky Lake? I leave for Kentucky Lake this Saturday, yes, sir. This Saturday, okay, good deal. Well, good luck, right. man. Uh, best of best of luck to you up there, and uh, hope you can catch some fish on Kentucky Lake because I hear it's not very easy right now. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's not very easy, but we're gonna try go try to figure something out. All right, Jaden, thank you, man. Appreciate you taking time out of your day to uh, to come on with us and give us some good good information there about Sam Rayburn. And uh, again, congratulations on your BFL win, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you for having me on. All right. Kevin, uh, Jaden Parrish uh, had, a, had a great weekend. And, and, I mean, when we say it wasn't even close, no, there was nobody uh, – I think 10 pounds was the difference between first and second. Well, 
I mean, seven. Like, I, I know he, 20, he he had twenty seven eleven uh, and twenty one oh two was second place. Yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. I was thinking about another tournament that Cato of 10 pounds was the difference, but you're right. It was a little closer than on that one, but still he blew everybody away. Well, Steve, I mean, he's been right there all year. You can go look, uh, go look back at all, all the big tournaments yeah. that's been on St. Yeah. Raven, all spring, you know, all winter, January, February. Jane's been right there on a lot. Of right. He finished, I think right. he said seventh or so in the Toyota and so on and so forth. He's, he's been competing all year. That's why I was glad to see he get the win in that BFL, it was time for him too. And uh, yeah. you know, I was to, to get him to come on the show. I've been kind of look, watching his name and thinking we're going to have him on the show here sooner or later. And you're the one that brought it up. Hey, he won. We need to make sure we get him on. And glad he did. Yeah. And uh, man, some interesting information right there, Steve. The fish is starting to come out. He's thinking, go ahead and get ahead of those fish for those Sealy guys. Um, so uh, good information for the guys coming to fish Sealy Outdoors tournament. Yeah, there's uh, quite a few of us to be headed over there this weekend. I'm leaving in the morning. The ABA Pro League will be uh, Texas Division is over there at Castle Boykin uh, this this weekend. So uh, I know I'm headed that away in the morning. So looking forward to getting and that's be my first time on Rayburn this year. I hadn't been on it at all, yeah. which is unusual for me. I'm usually on it two or three times by now, but uh, this year I just haven't had anything over there. But anyway, all right, we're gonna take one more break. When we return, we got tournament results, upcoming events as well as late-level reports for Toledo Ben and Sam Rayburn. You're watching Tackle Talk Live. We'll be right back. Pride Rods, custom-built fishing rods made to handle any and all techniques. Fishing rods designed for sensitivity and made to last in Montgomery, Texas. Built by Billy Kistler with the finest Gary Loomis North Fork composite blanks available. They offer a complete line of spinning and casting rods for both fresh and salt water. Pride Rods do more than pass the eye test. They excel in performance as well. Ask your local tackle dealer if they carry Pride Rods and pick one up to try it for yourself take pride in your fishing by using pride rods to learn more go to priderods.com or call 832-418-6040 the Lakes Insurance Agency is an independent insurance agency taking care of Texans' insurance needs for over 25 years. Offering auto, homeowners, boat, RV, life, health, and commercial insurance. Owner Clark Moore is a local fishing guide and tournament angler who understands your insurance needs and wants to be your go-to guide for all your insurance needs. For a free quote, give him a call and see why so many Texans trust the Lake Insurance Agency. Two locations to serve you in both national Nacogdoches and Bravas, Texas, or give them a call at 936-205-4467. The next time you're headed for Toledo Bend or Sam Rayburn, stop by Keith's Toledo Bend Tackle. They have an awesome supply of everything you'll need to catch the big ones. Whether your trip calls for bass fishing, white perch tackle, catfish bait, or the ultimate fighting shiners, Keith's Tackle has you covered. Keith and former Elite Series pro Ben Matsubu also have the latest information on what, how, and where you need to be fishing on Sam Rayburn or the Bend. So for all your tackle needs, check out Keith's Toledo Bend Tackle located just off Highway 21 on the Texas side of Toledo Bend or call 409-625-0181. You're watching Tackle Talk Live, a show dedicated to making you a better angler. Now back to the guys with all the inside scoop, Kevin Jean and Steve Graff. Welcome back to Tackle Talk Live, our final segment here today. Uh, this segment presented by Pride Rods, Keith Toledo Bend Tackle, Lakes Insurance of Nacogdoches, and Power Implements Marine, located right there in Iowa, Louisiana. Kevin, what happens if you mention Tackle Talk Live? Go buy Power Implements Marine, mention Tackle Talk Live, and save $500 if you purchase a new or used boat from them. All you got to do is mention Tackle Talk Live, or you save $50 on any service ticket, guys. All you got to do is go buy, mention Tackle Talk Live, boom, $50 right there deducted off your invoice. So uh, if you're within driving distance, Lake Charles, Louisiana, Iowa, Louisiana, you make sure and go by and talk to them. Amen. Amen. All right. BFL results from Sam Rayburn last week. Jaden Parrish, as we just interviewed, 27 11 for Jaden. Second place, Brian McDonough. He had uh, 21 02. Jerry Mason was third with 19 12. Fourth was Red Ballard with 19 11. Hayden Heck was fifth with 19 09. Neil Gilmore was sixth with 17 pounds even. 
Uh, Dylan Sorrells was seventh with 14-14. Drops off really hard here. Uh, eighth was Maverick Winford with 13.07. Ninth, Tiffany Hart with 12.10. And ran out the top 10 was Jacob Keith with 12.03. The last place check, which was the 18th place, Clifford McCarty, uh, an old buddy of mine from Shreveport. Clifford had 10.13 for the last check, Kevin, 18th place. I, I, it looks bad, Steve, but not taking off till 9 o'clock. Some guys wouldn't fish until 10 o'clock. And yeah, and we all know how Rayburn is with an early bite. Yes. Early bite there is critical. Yes. So, so it, that probably played a role. No, it definitely right. did. It definitely did. Yeah. So, uh, also this weekend over there on Sam Rayburn was the Outlaw Outdoors Sweet 16 tournament, which is the only one that they are doing this year, as we had Clint Wade on the last show. Um, first place was Harold Blythe and Mike Moss at five fish for 21 21. Second place, Anthony Waterpack and Jimmy Lloyd. Had 20.60. Third place, William Fabry and Shannon Price had 18.81. Let's see, how many did they have? They had nine boats, only nine boats over 16 pounds. Had, a, had several 15s underneath it, but had nine boats uh, over 16 pounds in that tournament. Wow. All right. ABA Ray Scott National Championship on Lake Seminole, Georgia. I uh, interviewed this gentleman today. First place uh, was Brad Benfield from DeMorse, Georgia. He had a two-day total of 45.23. And Kevin, on the second day, all five of his 22 pounds died. Oh. He had a two-and-a-half-pound penalty for dead fish and still won by a little, uh, a little less than four pounds. He was nervous. He said he was so disappointed. He was mad at himself. Evidently, his aerator got clogged on his side of the, of the live well. The co side was flowing really good, he said. But it was 10.30 before he actually, I think, missed it. And he said, when I stopped from moving from one spot, to, he said, I looked in there, and them fish were all rolled over. I wanted to cry. He said, I literally wanted to cry because I thought it just cost me the biggest win of my career. Yeah. And uh, But anyway, he overcame it, and uh, it all worked out for him. Uh, he was sad about the five fish, though, because he said they're just that just should never have happened. Uh, second place, Jody White from uh, Vermont. Uh, he had ten fish, two days, forty-one sixty. And by the way, it was a three-day event, but day one was canceled due to right. uh, had a bad storm come through and the wind. Uh, it was it was a bad day. Uh, Robert uh, Graveller was third from Mount Royal, uh, Quebec. Uh, out of Canada, he was third with 36.14. Michael Smith from Alabama was fourth with 36.11. Jason Burroughs from South Carolina was fifth with 33.76. Brennan Flick, one of my room dogs uh, for this event. Brennan had a uh, not a great day one, not a bad one, but a great day two. Brennan came in sixth from West Monroe. He had uh, 10 fish for two days, 32.58. He had a good bounce back day. Bounced back with uh, 19 pounds on day two. And uh, uh, Devin Freeman was seventh from Oklahoma, 32-20. Roberts, Walt Stevens, uh, another room dog of mine. Walt was leading this event after day one. Had a uh, stumped his toe on day two. With, uh, had brought in three keepers. Uh, had a lot of pressure in his area. Uh, it, just, it just wasn't in the cards for Walt. But he led after day one. And so... Walt uh, finished eighth in this event with 31-31. Ninth place was uh, Gary Mavic, Milvic from Florida. He had 29-71 and ran a top 10. Chip Rockhill from Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, was 10th with 28-82. So you got a good turnout. I had, I think, 110 yeah. voters and co-angers show out for this event. Good turnout. Good turnout. Yeah, definitely. Uh, last thing this happened this past weekend, the Brandon belt, uh, was up there on Cedar Creek, um, this past weekend, first place, Brandon Hollingshead and Jeremy Lambert won the event with 55 98 Justin tunnel, Tyler Holmes was second with 50.27 third place, Wyatt Frankins and Shane Campbell had 40.42 fourth place, Pate South and Hayden Marshall had 39.42 and fifth Fifth place was Will Andre and Cameron Mills with 38-14. So, 
Good job. Good job. And the last report we've got here for today was the Big Bass Tournament put on by Bass Champs at Tecron Mega Bass Tournament on Lake Fork. First place, James Crawford came in with a 9.88 pound bass. Um, let's see here. Max uh, Nuwambu New, New from Fairview, Texas was second with a 975. Thomas Trevino from Weatherford, Texas was third with 930. Joey Johnson from Mansfield was fourth with an 899. And Tom Monchi, uh, our Mockney from Quitman, Texas, uh, came in with a 799. Chad McClendon from Grapevine, 722. And then we had Scott Sansom with an 856. And then it dropped down to uh, the all the below slot limit fish. Uh, the next, the first slot limit fish was Clifton. Birmingham with a 2.33, and uh, actually uh, he garnered 15000 plus a $200 bonus card, so uh, a good turnout. And they had a good turnout for this event as well. Had 106 show up for Lake Fork, and uh, so congratulations to all those guys as well. All right, Kel, tournaments, what we got coming up this weekend? So the ABA Pro League Texas Division over there on Sam Rayburn, April 13th, um, this coming up weekend. Only thing I really have on the books. Oh, Texas Team Trail is on Lake Fort this weekend. So, oh, that's right. Yes, that's Texas right. Team Trail is on Lake Fort. Bunch of our guys going up there and fishing that since the championship will be on Toledo Bend. So that will be yeah. that's where most of our crew will be going this weekend. Right. All right. And uh, uh, next week, they are yeah the ABA Solo 150 on Toledo Bend, April 20th out of Cypress Bend Park. Must be signed up by 8 a.m. Monday morning, April 15th. So don't forget that deadline. And you cannot call in at 8 o'clock on Monday morning. Get in. You you have the registration is open online at American Bass. Go to their website, AmericanBassAnglers.com, and you can go to their website and you can register online starting Friday at 5 o'clock till Monday morning at 8 o'clock. You have all weekend if you want to sign up, but you got to do it online. And again, April 15th, Monday morning is the deadline for that. And Texas Team Trails, Kevin said, is there next weekend as well, April 13th. This weekend. Or this weekend. Yes. This weekend. And Bob Seeley, next week, 40th anniversary. Uh, look and see how many Bob uh, gets to show out for that. I mean, I, I think, Kevin, people are coming from all over the world to come to this event. Oh, they, I mean, they do every year. Absolutely. He's drawing people. Year. Yeah, he's drawing people from Africa, Japan. Steve, uh, again, I mean, he's drawing them you, from all over. You have enough pool. That you shut down the Corps of Engineers from pulling <laughs> yeah. water. Uh, That's true. You're a That's big true. deal. You're a big deal. You are, you are a big deal. All right, Lake Level Reports. Uh, Kev, you got Toledo Bend in front of you? Steve, you're going to have to go with that. I can't understand exactly what you got. Okay. Is that what uh, pool, pool there is 172. That's at 171.46 now. There's a difference of 6.48 inches right now. Not feet, 6.48 inches. Uh, low 10 day gain of 1.63 feet, 24 hour gain 11.76 inches, almost a foot. Uh, Sam Rayburn, Rayburn is at 158.17. That's a 6.2 feet, three, uh, 2.3 feet low. Uh, 10 day gain of 0.72 inches, 24 hour gain of 2.52 inches. And I'm sure that one is right. still on the yes. rise. Absolutely. Actually, both of them will be on the rise. Yeah. Toledo and Raven both this this through the weekend. The rest of this week, uh, they're they're gonna be on the rise, no doubt. Yep. Yep. I, I'm hearing eight seven to eight inches around Toledo Bend. What I'm hearing. Uh, I know north of there in East Texas, like around Longview, yep. Marshall, at over ten almost ten inches Which of rain. All of that's there. coming down to Toledo Bend. So that's all coming south. That's exactly right. So uh but anyway, and uh, so be careful out there. If you're fishing this weekend, you got a little high water. Respect people's property, please. You know, if you're flipping docks or whatever, be careful around their docks. A lot of people gotten real sensitive about their dock fishing. And, uh, so just be careful. Be courteous and uh, and uh, just, just try to be nice on the water because uh, there's a lot going on on the water right now. There's a lot of people out there. A lot of, a lot of anglers are fishing, and uh, it's getting real crowded on some of our waterways. That's a, that's a show for a whole nother day. Amen. So. <laughs> but anyway, you got anything else? I think that does it for the week. All right. Thank you for tuning us in. Again, keep, Kevin, I had two or three people uh, that, that one of them heard me talking at you know, Imagine That before takeoff one morning. 
and he trolled over and he said, you've got to be Tackle Talk Live. He was from Mississippi, oh, watches wow. the show all the time. And uh, we had several people that, that made comments and came up to me and said, we do a great job. And I told him we appreciated it. So, and uh, But anyway, th- we appreciate the feedback, guys. Thank you. Again, we appreciate you tuning us in. Check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever way you listen to podcasts, uh, check us out. If you'd like to become a member of our sponsorship team, do not hesitate to message us on Facebook, and Kevin will make sure to get a uh, complete packet, detailed packet sent out to you explaining everything, what what it's wor- uh, how, what the value is, what it costs, and everything to become a member and of Steve, our sponsorship Steve, one last team. thing. We're only 80 subscribers away from 2000. Oh, yeah. 2000. Yeah. We're, we're almost at 2000. And that's subscribers. We're we're way over view, weekly views with that, but we're right, right. right there at 2000 subscribers. So if, if you're watching this right now, especially on YouTube, and you have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button uh, and let's get yeah. to that them to that 2000 mark. And if you watch Castle Dine, hey, we're better than Castle Dine. <laughs> come on, come watch <laughs> us, man. I'm sure Todd will get a kick out of that. Now, we love Todd. He's a great guy, does a wonderful job. But anyway, Spread the word. We appreciate you. And uh, again, thank you for tuning us in today. We'll see you next week with more Tackle Talk Live.